Hi, this is Mark from eReplacementParts.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to repair a KitchenAid mixer when the planetary has stopped spinning. The planetary on your KitchenAid mixer is this portion right here. It's the part where the attachments hook to the KitchenAid, and it's the part that spins. The reason this would not be spinning most likely would be caused by this gear. There's a nylon gear in many of the KitchenAid models that acts as a fail-safe point. Basically, if the KitchenAid is overloaded, or maybe just over time, this gear will fail. And we'll show you how to replace that. We'll start the repair by removing all of the accessories from the mixer. And set those aside. To begin the disassembly, we'll remove this back cover, which houses all of the electrical components. There's a single screw on the top that I simply remove and then the cover will tilt off the machine like that. Now we'll remove the drip ring. That's this decorative ring here. Simply place a screwdriver on the ledge of the ring, give it a tap with a hammer, and it'll fall right off of the machine. Now we'll remove this roll pin which holds the planetary to the mixer. I use a punch and a hammer to do that. Now the planetary assembly is simply pressed onto the main shaft on the mixer itself. So to remove it, I use a couple of screwdrivers. There's some little indentations on the side of the mixer here and here and I can use my screwdrivers as pry bars to pry this piece off. Like that. Now I have access to a series of screws. There's five screws on the head here that will need to come out. Now there are four more screws back here that hold the motor housing on, and we'll remove those. One of your two rear screws will have a lock washer on it. This acts as a safety. If the other screws were to vibrate out, this one typically won't. So just make sure during reassembly that you keep that lock washer in one of the rear positions. Now we'll remove the motor from the stand of the mixer. To start, I will pull the strain relief, or the cord, away from the machine. Now I can simply lift the motor off of the stand. The first thing you'll probably notice after opening your KitchenAid is a very large amount of grease around all the gears. And this is perfectly normal. To continue with our repair though, we will need to remove most all of that grease. So I'm just using a putty knife, I'll remove it from the gears, and then just wipe it back into that, the upper housing that we removed previously. With the grease removed, you can now see the gears. Any one of these gears failing could cause the planetary to quit spinning. Typically though, this gear here is the one that will fail. To access this worm gear, first we need to remove the tower, and that's held on with three screws. Now I can just simply lift the tower away from the rest of the machine. Now we'll remove this roll pin. It's the next step to take this gear off. I'm going to rotate the shaft around so I can access the back side of that roll pin, like that, and again using a punch and hammer, I'll just pound that out. Doesn't take much to remove it. Now I can pull this lower shaft, or this lower gear, out from the assembly. Like that. Now the worm gear will slide away from the tower. The worm gear has a spacer washer on both the top and the bottom. These washers are the same thickness, so it's not important to remember which side it was on but you do just need to be aware that they are there so you don't throw them away with your old gear. Now we'll install the new gear. 
it just simply goes back in in the reverse order of how we removed the old one. I'll take the washers. They have enough grease on them that if I just set them onto the gear, they'll stick. Like that. Place the gear back into the tower. And then slide this lower gear, the tower gear, back through our worm gear. Now I just need to rotate the tower gear until the hole for the roll pin realigns on both gears, just like that. Now I'll just reinsert the roll pin back through both gears and tap it back into place with a punch. Well, the difficult part of the repair is finished. Now it's just a matter of reassembling everything. We'll start with the tower gear assembly. There's a couple of alignment pins on the stand that will orient that back to the gears. So we'll start by placing the tower back onto those alignment pins, just like that. Now we can replace the screws that hold it to the stand. Now we'll replace the motor portion. There's a bearing inside of here that fits onto the shaft on top of the gear assembly. And that's the main thing we need to worry about realigning when we replace this. Now you'll notice the motor assembly doesn't want to fit down tight to the stand. Don't try to force the motor at this point. The reason this is happening is the gears aren't meshing. To get the gears to mesh, take one of your punctures, put it through the hole on the spindle, and rotate those gears until they line up, and then the motor will fit right down into place. Now we'll replace the five screws on this portion of the stand. And now the four screws at the rear of the base. Again, remember, one screw has a lock washer. Make sure you put that screw in one of the rear two positions. Now we'll replace the planetary. Again, it just slides onto the shaft. There's another gear I'll have to rotate and line up before I can do the final pressing. Like that. Now we need to replace the roll pin that goes to this opening here. You'll notice that the shaft inside of that opening and the planetary are not in perfect alignment. To realign those, I'm just going to use a small Phillips screwdriver, put it through that opening, and pull the two into alignment like that. Now I can place the roll pin back into the opening and tap it into place with a hammer. Now we're on the back of the machine. I will replace the strain relief back onto the stand. Make sure my wires are all out of the way. When I took the machine apart, this paper gasket tore. This commonly happens. It's not a big deal. As I reassemble, I will just take the gasket, slide it into the grooves on that rear housing, and that will align it up properly on the machine. Then I can replace the housing. And again the single screw that holds it in place. And the final thing on our mixer is to replace the drip ring. And it just presses into place. There are many household repairs you can do yourself at home that'll save you a lot of money. And fixing a KitchenAid mixer that no longer spins is definitely one of those repairs. If you found this household repair video helpful, please feel free to leave us a comment or ask a question.